the first sermon I ever remember hearing, it was by Mbume Dandala, he was the head of the Methodist Church at the time. It was way back in about 1980. And he gave a service at the church in Durban, the main church in Durban. I, I, lived in, I grew up in Durban. And he preached on Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. And he talks about the day of judgment. And all the people are there. And it says, you'll put the sheep on his right and the goats on the left. You'll sep- Sorry, let me read it. 25, verse 32. All the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd. Separates the sheep from the goats. And he'll put the sheep on the right and the goats on the left. And he'll say to those on his right, come. You who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit to me, visit me. The righteous will ask him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger invite you in or in needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, i tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he'll say to those on his left, depart from me. You who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepare for the devil and angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. And I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. And they will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? And he will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not, did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. And they all go away to eternal judgment, punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. That's, that's scary. I've, I've recently gone through a kind of a change um, when it comes to these people on the street corners and beggars and that. I'm invariably, most probably like you, irritated by them. But I read this passage and I kind of, it hit me with like a barge pole that, how was I treating these people? You know, no, I haven't got anything for you. Oh, no, go, go get a job. Go find work somewhere. You know, that kind of... And, and I suddenly struck me, wow, Philip, what is coming out of you that makes you respond like this? And I've always been like that. And then I realized that, that I'm dealing with another human being who for whatever reasons, and it's not for me to judge it, is in a bad place. When my friends come to me and they're in a bad place for whatever reason, I don't judge them the same way. I don't judge people who come to me and they're fairly well dressed and they say, do I have work? I don't judge them like that. And I realized there was a part of my heart that was not right. that somehow within me I had to go beyond all my preconceived ideas, all my hang-ups about it. You know, all of that, I, I had to go beyond that and see the human behind that person on the street corner. To see the humanity behind that person. So I asked God to change the way I think. I couldn't change it. I wouldn't even know where to start. 
let alone change it. I, I don't even know where it comes from within me. So I couldn't change it. So I asked God to do it. And he made me realize something very simple. I can't help those people. I'm not in the position to be able to do it. But what I can do is change the way I respond to them. And so I've been working on that. I've been working on, if I can, because you can't always do it at street corner, looking them in the eye and say, I'm sorry, but I can't help you. I'm sorry, I haven't got anything to give you. I'm sorry, but I don't have work that I can offer you. And I've changed the way I talk to them, the way I see them, the way I respond to them. And instead of coming from a place of irritation and coming from a place of saying, there's another human being with me, they deserve to be spoken to decently. They deserve to be responded to decently. They deserve it because they may drink mess or whatever else, but they're still another human being. Working with addicts has taught me that. That no matter how full an addict may be, they still another human being worthy of being treated as another human being. That was the biggest lesson I learned about dealing with addicts. Not to condone not things, not to agree with them, but simply how I look them in the eyes and how I speak to them as I'm speaking to another human being. It's been an, a really challenging thing and I don't always get it right all the time. But I think that's what this passage, Matthew chapter 25, is really all about. It's not so much about clothing the poor. It's about how you relate to them. How humanely you can respond to the humanity within them. How you can allow your humanity to, to reach out and touch their humanity. Because then the beggar is another child of God. That's who they are. Yeah, that's what this passage is really all about. And if you look at Jesus' life, the way he treats people, the way he touches the leper, the way he talks to a Canaanite woman, He treats them with humanity. And as one human being, the humanity within himself touches another life. I am almost certain, I've noticed it with addicts, that when you start treating them humanely, immediately all the nonsense disappears. They start talking to you humanely back. It's funny. Treat to them humanely. And you go through all the, cut through all the nonsense. I think it will be the same with others who come across your path. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, enable us to see the humanity in others, to relate to the humanity in others, and allow the humanity within us to touch their humanity to bring hope. Amen. Closing thought. I think it is how you are with beggars that does more to help them than anything you give them.
That's my personal opinion now. Thank you.